Hello to all of our Pleasant Green members and listeners. Uh, this is our Sunday School lesson for August the 4th, 2019. And this is still out of Unit 3, titled Covenant, A Personal Perspective. And this is Lesson 10, and the title out of our Faith Pathway Study. Our title is A Trusted and Loyal Friend for Lesson 10. Our devotional reading is out of the Gospel of John, the 15th chapter, verses 12 through 17. Our background scripture is 1 Samuel, uh, chapters 18 through 20. And our printed passage is 1 Samuel, the 18th chapter, verses 1 through 5, and also the 19th chapter, verses 1 through 7. And our key verse for this uh, lesson is 1 Samuel, the 18th chapter, uh, the first verse. And it reads, After David had finished talking with Saul. Jonathan became one in spirit with David, and he loved him as himself. Our lesson's aims uh, for this Sunday's lesson are summarize Jonathan's plan to protect David from Saul, appreciate how the demands of honesty and friendship can surpass family bonds, and civil obedience. And finally, examine your relationship and recommit to pure and honest loyalty in the sight of God. Now, this Sunday lesson uh, is broken into three sections, and the first section will be uh, 1 Samuel, the 18th chapter, verses 1 through 5, and the analysis of the text is uh, Jonathan and David, and then brothers in quotation marks. And then our second section is 1 Samuel, the 19th chapter, verses 1 through 3, and its subtitle is Not a New Commandment. And then our last section, which is 1 Samuel and verse, uh, I mean, 19th chapter, uh, verses 4 through 7, and it is subtitled, Watch Out. So we have Jonathan and David, brothers, not a new commandment, and then watch out. Now, the three personalities or characters of our lesson is focused on Saul, who was the king, and then Jonathan, the king's son, and David. Um, now, although the uh, person of the book that we're studying, Samuel, is not actually mentioned uh, in the verses of the lesson, but it is recorded from the book of Samuel, Samuel, who was the last judge for the nation of Israel. And uh, through the reading in our lesson, a exp uh, specific emphasis on the uh, 15th uh, chapter, uh, just as one incident, uh, to look at the relationship uh, between Samuel and Saul. And this was one of the run-ins uh, which kind of exposes some of the character 
flaws of Saul, the king. Uh, but there will be many uh, that will be lifted uh, through the reading of the chapters that have been highlighted in our lesson. But it starts off at the very beginning uh, speaking to the relationship that was established between Jonathan and David. And uh, it says that, that Jonathan uh, took upon David as of himself. Um, in the King James, it says Jonathan loved him as his own soul. And in the NIV, it says he loved him as himself. And there are uh, a couple of things that maybe we can uh, look into uh, just to uh, kind of unravel uh, what uh, developed this type of bonding between Jonathan and David. So uh, one of the things that uh, we also uh, learn from a trusted and a loyal friend is is that the the practice the display of friendship uh, is also given uh, out of the book of wise instruction and out of the book of proverbs the um, 17th chapter and the 17th verse in Proverbs, and also the 18th chapter and the 24th verse in Proverbs, identify some characteristics displayed in behavior, uh, which encompasses friendship. And one, which I'm sure many of us are familiar with, uh, speaks of that first to establish a relationship or a friendship one must show himself to be friendly and then it goes on to speak to us that there is a friend that sticks closer than a brother uh, which ties into the friendship that our devotional reading in our lesson highlighted in the book of John the 15th chapter verses 12 through 17 and it speaks about how Christ was expounding upon the commandment of love. But also, uh, he made this distinction that he no longer referred to those whom he chose. And he explains that uh, in the verses from the verses 12 through 17, uh, he explains to his disciples that you didn't choose me, but I chose you. But then he says, but I no longer refer to you as servants, but as friends. And he makes this clarity here that the servant doesn't know what the master is doing or what the master is thinking. But he said, but the distinction is, is that I refer to you no longer as servants, but as friends. And then revealing that whatever the Father has shared with me, I have shared with you. And so we kind of get a backdrop of some of the characteristics and the qualities and behavior of friends and friendship. And um, it even speaks uh, in Proverbs 17 and 7, I mean 17 and 17, it talks about uh, that a friend is viewed over the relationship with the brother. And it talks about how sometimes in our relations with our relatives that we may sometimes encounter adversity. Uh, so it breaks this distinction that there should be loyalty between friends. And uh, we may 
fall out with friends, uh, sometimes uh, there's a clash in character and in the personality. The chemistry uh, just doesn't mix. Uh, but relatives are always our relatives. Uh, whether we have good kinship between one another, we can never deny our family members. They are always our relatives. But if we have friends, lifelong friends, that is a blessing. Uh, so uh, as we indulge into our lesson and uh, we look at this friendship between Jonathan and David, uh, we will uh, try and highlight some things that are needed even in this day and time uh, with friends to um, stabilize and to maintain our friendships. Now, in the development of friendships, we are sometimes joined together with another individual because we have uh, certain characteristics or certain attributes that are like-minded or are similar. And what we... Uh, See, and this is a little bit of ahead of our lesson beginning in the 18th chapter of First Samuel. But in your leisure, if you would read the 14th chapter of First Samuel, uh, we will see that one of the things that was similar between Jonathan and David is that they were both bold and courageous and vigilant uh, men of valor. Um, in the 14th chapter of uh, 1 Samuel, it talks about how Jonathan and his armor bearer. Now, at this time, Israel is in conflict, in war with uh, the Philistines. Uh, to the point that Israel was actually living up in mountain range areas and they were hiding themselves from the Philistines. Jonathan and his armor bearer, they sought the Lord and then they decided to go in and assault some of the Philistines. And as we read through the lesson, um, I believe that they uh, assaulted like 20 of the uh, Philistines, um, uh, men uh, that were in the garrison. And so uh, as uh, a result of this, then after these, they had killed these men of the Philistines, the word traveled around that the Hebrews of Israel that the Hebrews had come in and assaulted and killed some Philistines. And Jonathan, it was Jonathan and his armor bearer that actually had done this. And this uh, began uh, quite a few uh, conflicts where after this, there was a continuance of scrimmages, if you will, where there were different uh, uh, scheduled or different planned attacks from Saul's army um, and the Philistines. Different engagements, different battles, where little by little the Hebrews were gaining in assaults against the Philistines. And so when... We come to the 18th chapter of the um, uh, first book of uh, Samuel, and uh, we begin to read about Saul and his introduction of David. And when uh, Jonathan hears about this, uh, he then 
takes on a liking. He takes on a relationship, uh, admiration, respect, honor, love for David. Because as we read again back from our lesson uh, and we read into uh, the preceding chapters leading up to the 18th chapter of uh, Samuel, then we find that in the 17th chapter, this is where David meets Goliath. And we know the story of how David slew the giant. Um, and um, uh, with five smooth stones. And he only used one. And uh, the scripture in the 17th chapter of Samuel tells us how that Saul offered David his armor. He offered him a bronze shielding uh, helmet for his head and, and his sword and such. But David said that he had not worn it. And so he relied upon his sling and his stones. And then he threw one stone and hit Goliath in the forehead. And the scripture says that the stone was embedded in Goliath's head. It knocked Goliath to his feet. And then, of course, we know that after this, David took a sword and then cut the head of Goliath off and brought it back to Saul. And um, so uh, Jonathan, no doubt, has heard of the heroic actions that David had done and already had developed admiration for David. And so once David is within his presence, uh, uh, after being presented by Saul, uh, then he displays his admiration and his love uh, and respect uh, for what David had done. And uh, this is why he said that uh, he loved David as himself, no doubt because he too had gone into battle, which had been displayed or which had been uh, discussed as uh, the Philistines are greater than we. Uh, uh, hence, this is why we are hiding um, and we are up in mountainous rains uh, trying to create a barrier of protection for us against the Philistines. And the Philistines uh, had an attitude of boasting that we have taken these so-called great warriors and mighty men of God, and their God is so strong and powerful, yet they're hiding from us up in the mountains in caves. And so uh, when David comes down, the Philistines uh, have created this scenario uh, where if you kill one of our greatest warriors, Goliath, uh, bring out one man among yourselves who's not afraid uh, to fight one of our greatest warriors, Goliath. And if uh, you take Goliath, uh, then we will submit to you. But if Goliath uh, kills whichever is the greatest warrior of you, uh, and he kills your uh, uh, representative, your warrior, well then you must be in submission to us. And so this was a great defeat that took place which gave Israel a foothold into the area that was occupied by the Philistines. Uh, so this was a part of uh, the Hebrews uh, recovery, a part of their um, unifying, uh, regaining their, their self-respect and esteem and and realizing that their God was with them, that once again God had presented His self, God had uh, had taken uh, place 
in front of the Hebrews and had shown once again that their God was powerful, that their God was almighty, that their God was in their favor. And many times uh, through the lesson we hear of David going in to different scrimmages, different conflicts, and it was always viewed as God had favored David because he came out of battle after battle after battle and he always God was always on him on his side he was always defeating the enemy now now Jonathan's display of how he felt for uh David was actually displayed when Jonathan gave his armor, his sword, his robe, his bow, his belt. He gave all of his equipment, if you will. He gave that over to David. And it was viewed as though he was giving his succession to the throne. He was giving that place uh, to David. And... um during the exchange of rulership or kingship, um, the eldest of a king uh, son would be the heir to the throne. And uh, so um, in this situation here, it would have fallen to Jonathan. And by Jonathan displaying that he gave all of his um uh, his clothing his sword his robe his tunic and all and he gave it which was the clothing or the outer uh covering which was due for the king's heir for the next one in succession and by him displaying and giving this to david it was as though he was saying that I give my my place, my position to you. Uh, this really displayed how he felt about David, that uh, he admired him in such a way, that he had such love and respect for him, that he was willing to serve under him and to give his place to David. And... Uh, David had made such an impression upon Saul that also um, Saul uh, asked David not to return home to his own father and brothers, that he would stay uh, with the king and stay in the king's palace. And so uh, stay with the king in his own home to stay in the comfort of the king's uh, uh, dwelling. And so um, uh, Saul was very impressed uh, with David, and he also, he had sent David out on other scrimmages, on other conflicts, and David always held himself in such a manner that it always was viewed as he was wise in all of his dealings and in all of his actions, that he always carried himself with wisdom. Uh, even in battle, uh, he engaged into battle with, with strategy. He engaged into battle with confidence, uh, as though he acted in, in such a way that it was thought out. He wasn't one who operated in haste and havoc and and uh conflict so um each time uh he was viewed as being great in judgment and uh wise and counsel now these things as we look at this friendship uh this uh uh covenant this bond with uh, trust and loyalty. When, as we look at this, uh, and we think about 
uh, David doing all that one in service to the king should and and had done. Um, and we think of, well, uh, surely someone higher up in command would appreciate these things and be delighted in uh, these things. Well, then later we start to see a flaw of Saul. Uh, Saul apparently had a weakness in character uh, that he uh, felt that when somebody was arrayed as being wise, as being strong, as being vigilant, as being courageous and um, uh, a man of valor, a mighty man of valor in battle and such, that he felt that even though uh, Scripture hints as though he was giving him the uh, treatment and and the uh, displaying the uh, uh, kindness and acts of kindness as though he was preparing him uh, for succession. But he, at the same time, he was fearful that David would take over before he was willing to submit or before he was willing to leave his position as king. And because he was intimidated, because this was a weakness in his character, now we see in the second section of our lesson, which says not a new commandment, now we see that uh, Saul is plotting on several accounts uh, to kill David, the man who uh, brought or restored Israel to her dignity, killed off the mighty man of war from the, Phil uh, from the Philistines, uh, reestablished the respect and fear of the Hebrews among other groups uh, who possibly also were thinking of uh, bringing conflict and war and battle against uh, Israel. Now, now the man who had done these things and on repeated accounts had gone out and been victorious and returned back and again had slewed uh, many uh, different Philistines in battle. But now, and this happened uh, if we read through uh, our lesson, uh, I believe this takes place at the 18th chapter. If we read down, uh, starting with verse 7, um, or even if, with verse 6, it begins, the women, the celebration is taking place, and... Um, uh, they begin a chant, and they start talking about that Saul slain thousands and David slain ten thousands. And because in Saul's mind it was being viewed as though David was stronger, he was mightier than Saul. Because Saul killed thousands, but David killed ten thousands. And so... Uh, without maybe the intention of the women, they were just celebrating the victories and and they had been um, uh, being in submission and oppressed for some time, hiding from the Philistines. Now uh, everyone was rejoicing. And in the midst of that rejoicing, jealousy set in. Saul began to think that uh-oh, he's getting more praise than I am. And suppose he starts to think that because everyone loves him and, and he's already proven that uh, he's not a coward, that he's strong, he's courageous in battle, uh, suppose he decides to come against me and take my kingship. So now 
where Saul once showed honor to David, now Saul is threatened by David. And because he is fearful, which was a weakness of his own, David never displayed that he was going to uh, come against Saul. He never, uh, even though Saul on several attempts, uh, the scripture tells us where they were in company of each other and Saul would take a spear and throw it at uh, David to try and kill him, even though he was in his personal company. But uh, David never reacted. David never came back and said, no, I know you didn't just try to kill me. Well, since you were trying to kill me, I'm going to kill you. David exemplified respect and honor for the place and the person of the king, regardless of the king's actions. And as a result of that, his favor even increased among those who were serving under him as well as Jonathan. And as we read through the lessons, we begin to see how Saul's fear, how Saul's jealousy, how Saul's intimidation, uh, the effect of being intimidated, how that uh, actually spilled over into the thinking of Saul, even to the point of uh, adjoining David into his family through marriage. He even tried to use his wife, uh, uh, his daughter, uh, Mikael, he tried to use his daughter as a ploy to try and kill and assassinate David. So uh, we learn from the lesson that jealousy and success are, are two elements that usually uh, the re end result of these two things brings conflict upon one of the members who are exemplifying these two elements. And for David, it was for him. But David never turned back onto Saul, even though Saul made several attempts to try and kill David. So our lesson ends with Jonathan having to approach his father, Saul, and remind him of David's good works, remind him of how David slew the Philistine, remind him of how what David did brought uh, restoration back to the nation of Israel, and remind Saul that what has David done wrong? What sin has he committed? What has he done against you that would cause you to feel that you have to kill him because he is some way, he is a threat to you and to your position on the throne? So they, uh, Jonathan has to intervene. Jonathan, as a friend, he let David know of what his intentions were. He let David know that even though my father is seeking and plotting to kill you, it's not me. He let David know that our friendship, my love for you as a person, uh, the union and the bond that we have between each other is greater than my relationship being the son and rightful heir to my father's kingship. That I am displaying true friendship, which is loyal above all other evil acts, regardless to who is actually displaying the acts of evil, even though it's my father, and some probably think that I should show allegiance to my father, but wrong is wrong. And so therefore, our friendship, I will display that I have loyalty to our friendship, 
And I also recognize that you have not done anything wrong, that you have not taken any acts of disobedience or sinful actions against my father. And so Jonathan honored that David had done what is right in the sight of God and that his father had done what is evil and wrong in the sight of God. And so he brought this to Saul's attention. But this is uh, just one occurrence. Jonathan had approached his father uh, beforehand because his father had taken different uh, segments, different time, different phases of attempts against David's life. So here is just another occasion where Jonathan stands in the place of David and pleads for the life of David. So as we look at a trustful and loyal relationship or friendship between two, uh, we should ask ourselves that are we always uh, coming to the aid of one uh, through friendship, even if it involves the actions of a family member? Um, are we always standing on the side of right? Are we always honoring the uh, obedience unto that which is right in the sight of God? Are we always speaking up on behalf of those who are uh, being persecuted or taken advantage of or trying someone's trying to manipulate them uh, because they have some cause of jealousy or some flaw in character of their own and they choose the uh, fallacies of themselves to take action against those who are actually doing no wrong. So, as we look at our lesson, uh, let's judge ourselves and ask ourselves, are we trustworthy and loyal as friends to our friends? God bless you and God keep you is always our prayer.